and um, in this spot of ground to give God praise. In spite of everything that is going on, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. At this time, Sister Arsinta is coming to us with our opening prayer. We're just thanking you, Lord, for each and every arts who are here today. And we pray, oh God, that even as the word is expounded today, we will be receptive to every word. We will take in what is ours, praise God, and leave what is not. Today we just ask, God, that you will bless, sanctify, and keep your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today is really our youth day. And um, we have somebody. Very young, good young lady here, very talented young lady, um, our sister Andrea, who is coming to give us the word today. Welcome, sister Andrea. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we praise the Lord? Yes, praise the Lord. Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Yes, praise the Lord. It is indeed a privilege to be asked to encourage my brethren today and I want to give honor to my pastor pastor Houston and all your brethren I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus amen the, 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 the scripture I want to read from today is st. Mark 5 from verses 25 to 34 and it says a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors she had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his robe. For she said, if I can touch his robe, I will be made well. Instantly her flow of blood ceased and she sensed in her body that she was cured of her afflictions. At once, Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my robes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you. And you said, Who touched me? So he was looking around to see who had done this. Then the woman knew what had happened to her, came with fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Daughter, he said to her, your faith had made you well. Go in peace and be free from your afflictions. Every time I hear the story or I hear somebody talk about it, preach about it, I'm amazed at it. Because ladies, we can identify with this story. We can identify with seven days, 21 days, five days but 12 years we don't know anything about that we can't fathom it in our mind that's 400 three four thousand three hundred and eighty days non-stop that is not something that we even want to think about but this woman with this issue she had faith and her faith your faith is your belief the hope that you have that what you believe God for is going to work. Mm -hmm. And in Hebrew 1 verse, 11 verse 1, it says, faith is the reality of what is hoped. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who think I'm saying something strange, this is a different translation from the, the regular King James. The woman had faith in doctors, mm -hmm. and they, she believed that they would heal her. But instead, she was cheated, mistreated, and abused. And I believe they knew they couldn't help her because they have never seen anything like this in their whole life. 
and they didn't know what to do and they just took her money and they left her penniless. I believe she had nothing to eat because she spent all she had. I believe she was dirty because even if she took a shower in no time, she will be dirty. She had nothing left. She probably was homeless and live a lonely life because who wants to be around her? Blood doesn't have a nice aroma. It is offensive to the nose, as my pastor would use that word offensive. So it's, you know, instead of using another word, it's offensive to the nose. And she needed it to stop. So when she, she needed a miracle. So when she heard that Jesus was coming into town, she said, this is my last shot. And she believed with every fiber of her being that this would work. So the crowd is there, and I know she's dirty, she's smelly, she don't look like the rest, her hair probably is raggedy, her clothes raggedy, but she said, I don't care who is looking at me now. I don't care how I look, how I smell, I have to touch Jesus. Because I believe that if I touch just the hem, even the, the, the string around his waist, his sandals, anything I touch, I believe I'm going to be made whole. And she pressed up against them, and she touched Jesus' robe. And immediately the Bible said, straightway or immediately, the flow of fount the fountain of blood stopped. Yes. Something in her body tell her that something happened. Amen. And ladies, we know when, when something is happening inside, you sit down there quietly and something happens, you know right away. Amen. So Amen. she knew that something had happened. And Jesus also knew that something happened. This, the Bible said, Immediately, the power left his body, or another body might say the virtue left his body. So it made something happen. It was a, it was a two-way transaction. I'm healed, your power is gone. Amen. So Jesus turned around and he said, who touched me? And you know, we always have one smart aleck anywhere you go. And he said, don't you see the crowd is thick? What do you mean who touched you? Somebody must touch you because... Everybody is pressing up, but Jesus said, no, this is no ordinary touch. Amen. Somebody touched me. And when he turned around and he saw the lady, you know, she knew it was her. So I believe she was frightened, terrified, petrified, horrified. She was just frightened and she just came clean. I did it. And she confessed to Jesus all that was happening to her and why she touched him. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. You see, faith, faith um, without works is dead. That's right. And she, her works that she did was going to all the doctors, spending all, all her money. It didn't work. But then the work, the, 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 the important work that she did now to get healed was when she pressed up against yes. that crowd yes. to get to Jesus. Amen. So I'm saying to you out there and in here, Whatever you are believing God for today, know that your faith will make you whole. Your faith will let you get what you want. If, if today would be youth Sunday for the youth, if it's because you want to go to college, your work, you have faith that you're going to college, your work is to do good in high school. Amen. Pass all your subjects, do everything you can so that when it's time to go, you send out your application, that's your work. If you're going to start up a business, you need to have them business cards. Mm -hmm. You need to walk around and get some clientele. You can't just sit home and say, I want a car. And then you think that the car is just, you're just going to go to the front yard and you will see the car out there with a big bow on it. You got to work. You got to save some money. You got to do something. So I'm saying faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And this lady did the work and God healed her. So whatever you are believing God for today, remember you have to have faith. And don't just go to God and feel like you could ask him for anything and it just, just come. It don't come like that. You have to put in the work. And today I just, my topic I should have told you before was put your faith to the test. And I just want to share my testimony with you before I leave. And I grew up with my aunt. She pulled me literally from the birth canal. 
and I've been with her ever since, minus a couple years. And we lived together, and in 2018, she said she was relocating. She wanted me to come, I didn't want to go. Didn't want to leave my sister back here. And I didn't want to leave my church, because I've been down there and I prefer this church. And when she was leaving, she said, where are you going to live? Because she knew I couldn't afford what we were paying there, both of us. And I said to her, I'm going to live down where my sister is living on the first floor. And she looked at me and she said, you know somebody occupied that apartment, right? I said, yes, but he's in the hospital. But that's where I'm going to live. And she said, you know somebody occupied that apartment, right? Because she's worried. She want to know what's going to happen to me. I'm her child. Yes, I have a birth mother, but that's my mom. So she want to know what's going to happen to her after I leave. And I said, don't worry, I'm going to live there. So she left November 2018 and January 2019, I was staying with my sister. I put my stuff in storage and I'm staying with my sister. And I said, tell the landlord I want the apartment downstairs. But the man is in the hospital. Now the history with him is he was in the hospital before then he went to a nursing home for six months, but his rent was being paid and he came back home. And he's expecting to come back home, but I'm not expecting him to come back home because I want the apartment. So I'm there with my sister from January and all of January, February came and one morning I'm coming to church and I said, Lord, let the man give up the apartment now. And I walk out the house and I came to church. When I went back home, my sister called the boys, my nephews, and she said, I have news for you guys. Guess what? Mr. D died. <laughs> now, I said that he should give up the apartment in the morning. And by the time I come from church, he's dead. Now, I feel guilty. Now, this is the thing that we do sometimes. We ask God for things. And when it comes, we're, we're surprised. We don't know how it happened. But you ask for it, and you don't know which way it's coming. Now, remember now that like three weeks prior, he came home to check on the place and check his mails. So we're not expecting him to go. But pneumonia took him out in February. And I say this too. My blood pressure was a little up. I bought a blood pressure machine and... This is the one that just drives you crazy. It has green, yellow, and red. And the red is bad. Yellow, you're elevated. Green, you're good. And I'm checking it every day. And I said, Lord, I want to be in the green. The green is a good area. And I'm just showing you that sometimes when God gives you things, you don't know how to appreciate it. I'm checking it. I'm checking it. And one day, it was 119 over 79. I'm in the green. And I said, oh my God, it seems as if the machine is broken. <laughs> this is what I've been asking God for, to let it be in the green. And it came in the green, and I said, I think the machine is broken. So when God gives us things, sometimes he wants to give us things, but sometimes he know we can't handle it. Amen. Because he gave me what I asked for, and immediately I think something is wrong. So now this man passed away, and the apartment is ready. I asked my sister, she's always talking for me. I give her the message, but sometimes I feel like it needs to be a little stronger, so I'm always sending her with a message. And when he died, she said, where are you gonna have it? And we're gonna give them time to get their things up. By the end of March, early May, April, the apartment was ready. I glance in there, look good, and I say, yes. But I didn't go in it. February, October, November, till January 2020 came, I'm still at my sister. And sometimes I get frustrated and I say, God, I know you said the apartment is mine. I asked you, and you, and, and you, you said it's mine. My friend said to me, how do you know God said it was yours? And I said, once I asked him and he told me, I, I felt different. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, I, I put myself with the lady with the issue of blood, and I said, when she touched Jesus, immediately she, she felt Amen. different. When I asked God for the apartment, immediately I had a set of peace. It was mine. Amen. But sometimes you gotta wait. Yes. Right. So now I'm waiting. January 2020 came and I'm still there. And March came and one morning I came home from work and sometimes I sit outside in the car and just relax and sometimes I fall asleep. Oh God bless my soul. Because sometimes I'm out there for three hours sleeping in the car. And 
I'm in the car and a voice said, let me not say a voice, because my friend said to me, when I was telling him, he said, do you talk to Duffy? <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what Duffy is, it's dead people, spirit. He said, if you're saying a voice said, and, and a, a, a somebody said, you must know who is speaking to you. Amen. So he said, you're to say the spirit of the Lord said. And that friend also found me an apartment in Mount Vernon, because he was worried, and I said, I don't want it. I want the one downstairs from my sister. That's right. I believe God for it. So now I'm outside in the car, and the Spirit of the Lord said, petition for yourself now. And I, you know, when you hear something, you look around because you're wondering who said it. <laughs> I, I raise up, I look, I don't see nobody, I go back down. And I heard it again, petition for yourself now. I pick up the phone and I, and I dial her, and I'm gonna tell you what I said. I said, good morning, I'm gonna call her Miss D. Doris, your sister here. Not to come off as being impatient, but is there any way I could get in the apartment by the 14th of March? They keep raising the storage fee, and quite frankly, I would rather pay the money to you to want my rent. I don't care that the month started already, I just want my own place, thank you so much, Sister A. From the 7th of March, I sent her that, and she didn't answer till like four days later. And she said, okay. You just don't like the okay, no. it, it, it never sounds strong. I need a strong something, but and I still know it's mine. And then she, I text her again on the 12th because the rent is due at the storage on the 14th. And I'm not, I'm not living at my sister for free. So I'm paying here, I'm paying there, I'm doing extra stuff, so I want my own place. I text her again and I said, good morning. Please remember, I need to be out of the storage before March 14th. Today would have been the best day. Thank you. And she texted me back and said, I'm planning to come today. I can't say the exact time, but I'll be there. You know how happy I was? Start putting things together, you know, because I'm ready. And she came that night, and the next morning I find myself down by U-Haul driving this big truck. Maybe I have no business driving because I couldn't see anywhere around it. I was just nervous. But God helped me to drive it from one point to the next. And I'm saying, I'm where I want it to be. I asked the Lord for it. He, he didn't tell me to He said, it's yours. But as I say, sometimes it's yes, no, and wait. wait. And we don't like the yes, we don't like the no and the wait. We just want the yes. But sometimes when God gives us things, you're not going to use it effectively. It's not going to be productive at that time. So he gives it to you at the time when you need it the most. Amen. And that is the time you will make the most of it. So I just want to encourage somebody today. Whatever you are waiting for, whatever you are expecting of God, if you're asking for it last year and it's not there yet, it's not your time yet. Amen. And even though it didn't come true yet, he's still an on-time God. Because he don't work on our time. He work on his time. Amen. So I'm just encouraging you, whatever you're begging God for, whatever you're pleading for, whatever you're asking for, your time is coming. Just continue to wait. Continue to serve him. Continue to do his, live in his will. Pay your tithes, especially when you pay your tithes, it just comes through so good. Mm -hmm. So I'm just encouraging somebody today. Wait on God because he's an on-time God. Amen. Put your faith to the test because it is worth it in the end. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Andrew. Put your faith in God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Sister Sydney is coming right now to pray the closing prayer for us. Praise the Lord. Continue to pray for our young people that they get the boldness to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we come to you right now. I just want you to bless everybody in this room in the name of God. Thank you for the word that was produced unto us today. As we depart into our different directions, I just want you to cover us in peace, Lord. I pray, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.